Hello students. So today we are going to go for the another type of the extension of the range of your ammeter and the multimeter. In this, we are going to learn the disadvantage of what we learned in the previous lecture and why we want to switch over to our IR shunt and the potential divider multiplier. So in our previous lecture, we have studied that a multi-range ammeter has this switch that goes between your different resistors that give you provide you the different ranges of the current that you can measure with your this meter. Now, when your this switch is going from your position one to position two, in between that there is no resistance attached in the circuit, and that means for that time heavy current can flow through your this meter. Same is with the multi-range voltmeter. When your this switch is going from one to another position, your this circuit is open. So when the circuit is open, no current is going to go through the meter. So to avoid this disadvantage, we have got a continuous resistance through which we have made the connection so that a resistance always keeps on there in the ammeter or the voltmeter that we are using to extend its range. So let's learn that how we are going to use them. So now we come on to the Ayrton shunt. Basically, it consists of this whole combination of the resistance that we have used here and that acts as a that acts as the shunt and there are various connections. You can see here that point number one, two, and three, there are various connections that are taken out from the single piece of that resistance. So even if switch one is not connected yet, and it is the switch is moving between one and two position, still the resistance will be there attached in the circuit. And so it is not going to uh, uh, burn the meter. So now we come on to, we will be discussing three cases in this to learn that how we calculate the uh, resistance that is required to be put in shunt with the resistance meter resistance to extend its range. So the very first case is when we have our switch at one. And so the total resistance in the circuit here is R1 only. And now we are going to look at that your this portion is in parallel with your this portion. So that means the voltage drop across this will be equal to voltage drop across this thing. So you know that the current here is going to be IEM. So the total current, if it is entering as I1, so the current in this branch will be total current minus IEM, right? So now what we are going to do is, we are going to equate over this voltage with this voltage. So that makes it to be R1 multiplied by I1 minus IEM equals to Rm into In. So solving this, we are going to get R1 I1 minus R1 Im equals to Rm Im. Now taking our this R1 IM to this side, so this makes it to be RM IM plus R1 IM. So taking out IM common from these two, so it will be R1 plus RM. And here it will be R1 I1. Now we have discussed in our previous lecture that the power of the shunt is given as M and that is equals to the ratio of the current to be measured upon the meter current. So that means taking over this IM to this side and taking over this R1 to that side is going to provide me with I1 upon IM equals to R1 plus Rm divided by R1 divided by R1. So that makes it to be 1 plus Rm upon R1. And this is the value of our 
m so now we are going to find out that what will be the value of r1 that we need to calculate because you will be asked in the numerical to find the value of this shunt resistance for which the range is to be this one whatever the value is to be given so you know that the r1 value will be equal to what So now we have to first bring our this IM to this side. And so it will be R1 into I1 upon IM minus IM upon IN equals to RM. So this cancels out and you know the value of I1 upon IM as M. So R1 into M minus one equals to RM. So that gives you the unknown value of this resistance to be Rm divided by M minus one. So this is the first value of our first resistance to extend the range to I1. So now we are going to calculate for the, we are going to take case two and we are going to draw the circuit again to calculate the case four, what will be the value of R2 and corresponding circuit. So now we come on to our case two. Just pay attention to now what will be the voltage across these two parallel branches. Now you can see that the current is entering at point two. So when the current is entering at point two, it is getting divided at this point into two branches. One current is going towards the meter and that is our im current while the other current is i2 minus im current so i2 im as you can see is flowing through over this part only r2 resistance only so the very first thing we are going to write is i2 minus im multiplied by rm is the voltage drop across one parallel branch that is equal to the other par parallel branch voltage drop so what is the total value of the resistance in this total branch? You can see here that now our this part of our this resistance is also in series with because same current is flowing through this also and this also. So same current is because flowing through RM as well as our this part of the resistance. So we have to take the series combination of our this part of the resistance now what will be our this resistance this is total resistance r1 and subtracting our this portion of r2 from here will make it to be total resistance r1 minus r2 plus in series with our this combination is in series with rm and this whole combination when multiplied with im will give us the same voltage as is there in our this parallel branch so let's multiply im and rm with the terms in the brackets so we get here while here we are getting r1 im minus r2 im plus rm im so cancelling your IMRM term, just a second here you have got your not here RM but here you have got the resistance R2 here. So here it will be R2 only. So now cancelling out the term im r2 in both sides of our this equation so this cancels out with this and we are left with our i2 r2 equals to r1 im and rm im so if we need to calculate the value of r2 it will simply be equal to im upon i2 multiplied by r1 plus rm and you all know that our M2 will be equal to I2 upon IM. So taking this in the denominator, it will be equal to R1 plus RM upon I2 upon IM. So this is going to provide us with the value R1 plus RM divided by M2. 
so this will be the value of our unknown resistance r2 so similarly we are going to go for our case 3 to find the value of our r3 so now i think you yourself can answer me that what will be the resistance of the two parallel branches if you want you can draw the equivalent circuit as this is your r3 while in the other branch you have got your resistance what will be the resistance that is coming in series with r m will be the subtraction of r1 minus r3 then in series with the resistance of the meter that is rm here the current that is going is this is your total current i3 here the current that is going is i3 minus im while here the current that is coming is im so equating the two voltages in these parallel branches we have got r3 multiplied by i3 minus im equal to i m multiplied by the sum of the series combination of r1 minus r3 and r m so again multiplying both sides with the terms in the bracket you get i m r1 minus r3 im this term is going to get cancelled with your lhs side so your this term is going to get cancelled with this so now you want to calculate the value of r3 here so that gives you the value taking im common so r1 plus rm dividing it by i3 from that side so again you know that your m3 will be the ratio of i3 upon im so taking your im towards this side is going to provide you the value of r3 as r1 plus rm divided by m3 so this is your next value so similarly you you can find the different values of the shunt resistances that are required to extend the range of your ammeter so now we are going to do a small numerical based on your this theory so now we come on to your question number 1 on your i attention you have been told to design an iron shunt to provide an ammeter with current ranges of 1 ampere 5 ampere and 10 ampere the very first thing that you should do is just mark here that 1 ampere means i1 5 ampere means i2 and 10 ampere means i3 the meter resistance is given to be 50 ohms and full scale deflection current full scale deflection current means the value of im is given to be 1 milliampere now you have got everything right so now what you need to do is you need to find out the values of r1 r2 and i3 that are required to design an iron shunt right so design an iron shunt means that you require to calculate what will be the value of r1 r2 and r3 so now let's go on to your formula for your m1 first the value of m1 you all know is equal to i1 upon im where the value of i1 is 1 ampere while the value of im is 1 into 10 raised to power of minus 3 that is 1 milliamperes so that gives you the very first factor as 1000 now you are going to calculate the value of m2 similarly for that you will be getting the value as 5000 and the last value similarly you are going to get as 10000 because i am remain same only the value of i1 i2 and i3 is going to vary because m2 is equals to i2 upon i am and m3 is equals to i3 upon i am so now you all know the formula the very first formula to calculate your r1 is equal to rm upon m1 minus 1 so that gives you the value as 50 upon 1000 minus 1 
So, this gives you approximately the value as 0 0.05 ohms. Similarly, you have to put the next formula for R2 just, just that you just calculated as R1 plus Rm divided by M2 as 0 0.05 ohm that you have just calculated in your this first part plus 50 divided by 5000. That is going to provide you with the value as 0 0.01 ohm. And the last one that is R3, again, you have to put the formula that we just calculated as R1 plus Rm divided by your M3. So putting the value of R1 as 0 0.05, 50, and M3 here as 10,000, you get the value as 0 0.005 ohm. So this is for calculation of the values of R1, R2, and R3, right? But when you have to design your this whole thing, this whole R1, you know, this R2, you know, and this R3, you know. So you can also find the difference between what will be the difference between R1 and R2, what will be the difference between R2 and R3. So it can be asked also that find out the actual value of the resistance that will be there between the switches. So now we move on to your potential divider multipliers. So now we come on to our potential divider multiplier. So before we start, we should just revise some previous concepts that we discussed in our previous lecture. That now the multiplier M1 value will be equal to V1 upon Vm, where this Vm is the voltage across your this meter having a resistance of Rm. Then your M2 value will similarly be equal to V2 upon Vm, and similarly the multiplier 3 value will be equal to V3 upon Vm, right? So one more thing that you all should remember is that if I say that I have got the current here that is coming is in this branch, let's say I am. So if I am going to divide this complete voltage V1 with I am, what I am going to get is the complete resistance of over this branch. That is the combination of R1 plus Rm. So that means if you need to calculate the value of R1, what you should do? Because V1 upon Im is going to provide you the value of R1 plus Rm. That is the total resistance of this part in which that current is flowing. And where that voltage have been across that resistance, that voltage has been applied. So if you need to calculate the value of R1, your this thing will be equal to V1 upon Im minus R1, right? So now you know that also your this Vm is equal to Im into Rm. So that means the value of this Im can also be written as Vm upon Rm. So replacing my this Im here with my this relation, I am going to get V1 divided by Vm upon Rm minus R1. So you all know that the value of my this V1 upon Vm is equal to M1 here. So I'm going to replace my this thing with M1. Your this Rm is going to go in the numerator. So this becomes this thing. So here we have just made a mistake. If you all can see and you all can uh, just say here that this is R1 and I have taken here R1 only. So basically what should have come here is our this resistance Rm has to go towards this side to get subtracted. So here it should be Rm. Similarly here I have to replace this with Rm and again here I have to write Rm. So taking out Rm common from here, we will get M1 minus 1. So this is going to be the value of our R1 resistance. 
So similarly, we are going to go for our R2 value. So let's just write here, but you all have to remember your this value. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my R1 over at the top. So R1 is equal to M1 minus one into R because we are going to need it in our uh, next steps. So now we are going to write for our R2 value. So now writing for R2, the value of R2 will be, you all can see that when we divide V2 by IM, what we are going to get V2 by IM is going to provide me the complete resistance R2 plus R1 plus RM. Why? Because this V2 voltage has been applied to the series combination of R2, R1 and RM. Right, and the current is passing through them. So we are going to get the complete value of the total resistance. So what we are going to do is after dividing V2 by IM, we are going to get, let me rub my this branch here because now we don't require it for our next step. So for V2, we are going to write that we have to subtract now because we want to find R2. So your these two things are going to go on to your other side. Right. So again, we have to replace my IM with here. I have already written. So I have to again replace IM with VM upon RM. So here you go with VM upon RM minus R1 minus RM. So your this V2 by VM is going to make you give you the value m2 rm now you all know that r1 we have just calculated is equal to m1 minus 1 into rm so i am going to replace r1 with the same value so it is m1 minus 1 into rm minus rm so let me rub from here so that we can continue the calculations over there so now you can take out your RM common from this whole equation. So taking RM common, you get M2 minus M1 plus one minus one. So your this cancels out and you are left with RM into M2 minus M1 as the value of R2. So similarly, we are going to calculate the value of R3. So let me rub this whole out. But now we require the value of R2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write here R2 as M2 minus M1 into Rm. And I am also going to rub over here because we only require your V3 now. So to calculate the value of your R3, you know that if we divide V3 by the complete current IM, we are going to get this whole part of the resistance. That is the combination R3 plus R2 plus R1 plus RM. So we need to subtract, except R3, we need to subtract all the other resistive values from here. We have already calculated R2 and R1 here. So you can put the value here, again, replace your IM with that. And after putting all the values, you are going to get your R3 as M3 minus M2 into RM. So similarly, you can carry on the formulas for various resistive calculations, multiplier calculations to extend the range of the voltmeter. So now we come on to the numerical based on your potential divider multiplier. So now we come on to your question number two that is based on your potential divider arrangement and you have been asked to find out the value of the resistances that can extend the range of one milliampere meter movement to 0 to 50, 0 to 250, 0 to 10 volts range. So for this purpose, the very first thing that you need to calculate is your VM. That is going to be equal to IM into RM. Both have been already given to you. The value of 
RM is given out to be 10 ohms, while the value of IM is 1 into 10 raised to the power of minus 3. So that gives you 100 millivolts. Sorry, the value here is 100 ohms. So that gives you the value as 100 millivolts. So now we are going to calculate our multiplier one value that is coming out to be V1 upon Vm. So the value of V1 is 10 volts, while the value of Vm is 100 into milli. So that is going to give you the value as 100. Next, the value of M2. Similarly, you are going to calculate the value of M3 also. That will be equal to 50 upon 100. Let me take this 10 raised to power minus 3 above only. So you will be having 500. Similarly, the value of M3. That is 250 is going to be 25. So now you need to calculate the values of R1, R2 and R3. So the value of R1 will be equal to M1 minus 1 into Rm. So M1 you know is 100. So 100 minus 1 into the value of Rm is 100 ohms. So it is going to provide you the value of 9900 because 100 minus 1 is 99 multiplied by 100. Similarly, the value of R2, you are going to get the value as M2 minus M1 into Rm. So the value of M2 is 500 minus 100 is 400 multiplied by 100 will be equal to 40 kilo ohms. So let me put the units here and similarly the value of R3 it will be equal to M3 minus M2 this is 3 into Rm. So the value of M3 here is 2500 multiplied uh, minus 500 multiplied by 100. So that is going to be equal to 200 kilo ohm. So you can see that how much high range of resistances you require to extend the range of the voltmeters. But these are always preferred so that to use external resistors in connection with a given voltmeter. That means you have got a fixed voltmeter range and if you want to extend you have got external resistors that you can connect with your these voltmeters to extend its range if you require it. So that's uh, one more topic has been left and that is the sensitivity. Let's complete it and finish up with this lecture. Now we come on to the sensitivity of the voltmeter. The sensitivity of voltmeter is defined as one upon I M. That is the meter current that it can read for full scale deflection. So now we have got the numerical based on this thing that which meter has a greater sensitivity meter A having a range of 0 to 10 volts and a resistance of 10 kilo ohm as a series resistance that multiplier resistance with the meter or meter B having a range of 0 to 300 volts and RS is equal to that multiplier resistance is 298 kilo ohms. Both meter movements have a resistance of 2 kilo ohms. Just see here that what does this question means. It means that if this is our RS, that is the series multiplier resistor, and this is my RM. My this RM value is 2 kilo ohm, while the value of my this series resistor is 18 kilo ohm for meter A and 298 kilo ohm for meter B. So what I need to calculate is the sensitivity. 
so that means i need to calculate this complete im when total voltage is being given the ranges are given to me so you all know ohm's law i think everybody knows it so what is your this ohm's law v is equals to ir so that means i have to calculate the value of my this im so that means your this im is going to be equal to the total voltage for your meter a it is going to be 10 divided by the total resistance that is total resistance of 18 kilo ohm plus 2 kilo ohms so that is going to be 10 divided by of 20 into kilos so similarly we have got our this is for let's say im1 for im2 i have got the value of 300 divided by 298 plus 2 kilo ohms so that will make it to be 300 divided by 300 into kilos so now because your sensitivity is 1 upon so that means when we need to calculate our sensitivity our this will thing will be equal to so this makes it to be 20 into 1000 divided by 10 that makes it to be 2 kilo ohms per volt mind it the units will be 2 kilo ohm per volts because your im is equals to vm upon rm so when your this rm goes up so the units become rm upon vm so that is why ohms up per volt and when we talk about your this thing the sensitivity will be 1 upon im 2 so that will be 300 into i am just writing here k only that is the 1000 one and 300 here so that will make it to be 1 kilo ohm per volt so which sensitivity is greater obviously your 2 kilo ohm per volt is greater as compared to this thing so that means your meter a is more sensitive as compared to your meter b so this is how you do the numericals based on your sensitivity and these are important because they come in your competitive exams as the multi objective questions so that's all for now hopefully you have understood this topic well thank you so much for listening